move towards smaller concept stores is a key part of retail's evolution is a concept you have discussed in the past. Can you expand on this? Okay, good. So big tenants are afraid now to take big spaces. So take, take a concept of um, 7-Eleven. A while back, well, one of our students, if not two or three, have 7-Eleven stores. They do well with them. They know what they're doing. And then one day I was at an airport, I think Boston, I can't remember, and I saw 7-Eleven Express. Smaller concept at an airport, and I called my friend and I said, you know, he's been in my uh, database for a long time, and I said, hey, they're having uh, 7-Eleven Express. He said, yeah, they're starting to test these smaller retail locations and, and concepts. You see Best Buy, they started testing that, they tested that. So the key thing here is if you have a big space that you can put under contract, so a big tenant left, big space tenant left, you look into, if you can't get a big tenant to replace them, look into what if I split it into two? Can I actually rent it faster? Now, ironically, I, the one call I got just actually recently, I have a space 2,250 square feet, give or take. And this should go to a jeweler or a retailer or a food place, etc. A food place would be hard because we don't have space for an extractor um, hood, which you got to have for a building because it's, the upstairs is residential, downstairs is my retail space. And I got a call from this lady, she wants to put some juices. And whoever calls me, I always program on my phone, you know, whoever is calling, I put, um, I, I write next to it, interested in. Uh, putting retail juice, I uh, yeah, discussed 7,500 a month, uh, the 2,200 square feet, 211 Crystal Street. Okay, so I put, I write the info and I put the date so I can remember. And sometimes I search interested and then all the ones I put interested in will pop up for me. It's my basic way of keeping track. But then literally a few hours later, I got, and she said to me, 2,250 square feet is too big for me. I just want to sell some juices. It's working out so well in some other location. And I think in your location, it will be amazing because of the ice cream business across the street. I know you own the other building as well. They're bringing so much traffic and I'll bring traffic. We'll feed off each other, which is always good to see the neighboring tenants. So I said, look, I cannot subdivide the space and you can pay 7,500. She said, why not? I said, well, because I want one tenant. How am I going to split this? Is there two entrances? I could, but it's too much hassle. Well, lo and behold, I got another person calling, says, I'm a jeweler. I do things on consignment. We're very successful throughout the areas. And we're in San Diego and we're in Miami and all this, but I don't need so much space. So I said, wait a minute, call this lady. Let me talk to her. If it's okay with you, I'll put her in touch with you. I'll send you a group text. So now I send them a group text. So my point to you is if you can find tenants that can work together, it would be great. So if a tenant calls you and says, I don't need 4,000 square feet, I just need 1,000. You ask them, do you know other people because of the 3,000 square feet left that would come in and share space with you? And if so, you just got yourself an opportunity to take larger spaces that are hard to market, get them at a good deal under contract, line up the tenants that are smaller tenants, and you're gonna get the cash flow. Because at the end of the day, the game is one of two things, cash flow or cash out. Cash out will make you wealthy. Cash flow will give you freedom. If you can combine both, then God bless America, Puerto Rico, St. Thomas, and the whole world. But if you go outside the United States, you'll have to worry about taxes like you have never dreamed. And when you die, your kids and loved ones will deal with the Problems you've never imagined because inheriting stuff outside the U.S. is a problem. And dealing with taxes for outside the U.S., you not only have to pay taxes there, but you have to pay taxes in the U.S. because you're resident here or citizen here, and you have to pay what's called guilty tax. Guilty as in G-I-L-T-I. You can Google it. It has to do with global income uh, transfer to lower the income, something like this, that was created by Donald Trump when he said, I'm gonna force these big companies like Starbucks and Amazon, all that, that are set up in the Netherlands and all this to repatriate the money because we're gonna charge them 10% tax on top of what they were gonna pay as guilty. The guilty was the global leverage income, whatever. And it's a pretty clever name like, hey, you're guilty for transferring all the money outside the US. We're gonna make you bring it. 
it was not totally successful because he got yanked out of presidency, so it was not continued the way it was supposed to be enforced. And then the Democrats took over and said, ah, just open the borders, man, let it happen. Let it roll in. Actually, if you're in trouble and you can't have medical, uh, I was just Googling uh, bankruptcies in the United States uh, last night after I got all the questions and stuff. 66% of chapter seven bankruptcies in the United States are because of people not being able to afford some medical issues. Number one problem for business owners to fail and go bankrupt also is they got some medical issue, they couldn't handle it, and their insurance did not cover everything. And you know what the article suggested? They said, best thing is to renounce your US citizenship, go to Mexico, come back, and say, I'm not a US citizen. According to the state of California, you can Google this, you will get the services you need. God bless America.